those of you who got an invite, welcome to Nerd Prom. <laughs> no matter where in the world you are, we're all Nerds International with the hyphen. Hello, and today I'm going to do another episode on standard action. So if you haven't seen it before, there was a previous video I did on standard action, and I will leave a link in the show notes. So uh, this episode, I'm going to talk about some changes that Eric's made and uh, talk some more about uh, the things that you can do in standard action. Uh, first of all, I want to mention that if you go to the about page, at the bottom of the standardaction.net you can see the link to the Twitter, Facebook and Discord and I really do suggest that you follow the link to the Discord uh, because Eric is very active there uh, there's a channel for newcomers there's a channel for some general chat any questions that you've got you can see Eric down here answers the questions and feature requests anything that you think that needs added to it and finally I'm um, looking for games. So go over to the Discord and check that one out. And I'm going to show you now some of the things that have changed or that have been added to Standard Action. Um, so let's get into it. So the first thing is let's go into the dashboard for my fifth edition. And you notice we now have a system. You can now, he's added several systems so you can add the system of your choice. So if we go into dashboard, underneath the title these are the system you got to choose from no system which was the default before we've now got pathfinder starfinder dungeons and dragons fifth edition savage worlds index card rpg and homebrew on the content side these are our players we can now add folders and add characters in this part of the uh, dashboard and we can now download the chat log. So if we download the chat log, this will save it as a .txt file. And we can now add it to save it somewhere. Okay. So if we go into what uh, one of our characters here and click edit, you can see now there is a new tab here called attributes. So if you go onto the attributes, you can now set a name for the health bar so in this case I've set the name as HP we just click new attribute add whatever you want to and give it a value so for this character is maximum HP is 33 and his current value is 33 so that is set and I'll show you how we use that in a second so we go back to our dashboard And this is where we can delete as we did before. If you, one thing I didn't mention in the previous video, if you want to share this with your players, this is the button you click on. Click on share, that will give you a link which you can copy and then you can send it an email. Okay, so let's open up this sheet now and let's have a look at some of the, uh, the new stuff that's been added. So if I go across to one of my games and we'll go to the Van Delvin map. What I didn't mention before is the little um, bookmark here is how you transfer your players to the map. So currently the players are on this Van Delvin map. If I drag it up to the coastal map, the players will now be transported to that map. And that is how you move your players between the different maps. Whatever that's on, the players will see. So let's go to this map here. And I put the players on. Now, if I click on settings, you can see this is where you can set the attributes. So if you add a bar, if you drop down anything you've set on attributes in that dashboard, you can set and it will bring the information in. So that's a great new addition. You can still add bars with nothing linked at all. So um, 
that is, the option is still there. I'm not sure if I mentioned it last time, but the other thing you can do is on the token is set GM notes. So for example, if I want to know that the armor class for this one is 15, I can set that. And then when I go back into it, the armor class is 15. It doesn't always show. Sometimes you have to click down. There we go, armor class 15. So we can leave our notes there. Right, macros. So with the macros, as I said last time, you can add uh, macros in here simply by clicking. And this doesn't always work for some reason. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Let's come out of it and come back in again. It's still beta, so there we go. Here's all the macros that I've got added. So you click here, add the macro. If you click the eye icon, the bar appears at the bottom. And when I click in on any one of these, then they will be pinned to the bar. So let's open up one of the macros I've done. So this is um, one of the creatures that uh, I've got. I think this was an ambush drake. So I've just called it ambush drake attack ADA. And there's the roll 1d20 plus 4. The ambush drake is damage. It's a 1d6 plus 1. And then for if he's doing an advantageous attack, because if he's got more than one of his cohorts within five feet of him, he, his attacks are counted as advantage. So there's the formula. 2 die 20, keep 1, plus 4. So that will keep the best one and add 4 to it. So let's see this in action. If we go into our chat window, exclamation mark to call it, ambush drake attack. There's the normal track, 1d20 plus 4. If we're doing a advantageous attack, put the code in. So there are all the 7 and a 14, and it's taken the 14, added the 4. And finally, I did the damage. There's the damage roll. Now, I did query with Eric, any of the macros that you create here as the GM will only be available to you. Your players will not be able to see any of these macros. It is up for the players to create their own macros. So I would uh, suggest that you talk them through it as you're doing it to try and explain it to them. Okay, so let's have a look at um, some of the other commands we can do in the chat. Now, if you want to know what commands are available, forward slash help. And this shows you that the roll command is forward slash R. If you want to roll secretly, it's slash GR. If you want to emote, it's an E and an H shows you, followed by command, shows you the help and the message. So let's just show you each one of these. The roll 1d20 is a public roll. A GM roll of 1d20. It shows you it's secretly rolled, so that won't show to your players. And if you emote and select any one of the players down here, the characters, then you'll see that that is attributed to them. So if you want to do NPCs with um, feelings or um, tells on the face, then you can add it there. And the last command is help. So let's have a look at H with the slash slash r and this shows you all the dice rolls so use d to control the type and number of dice use plus or minus star asterisk or forward slash is for math operations so for example two plus five is the math operation that's going to be with r so it's two plus five helps if i can type the right one isn't it two plus five so you got 2 plus 5 is 7. K is keep the highest roll, and you have to put a number after it. So that's where, if you're doing an advantage, so roll 2d20, keep 1. That keeps the highest roll. You can also uh, keep the lowest roll. And again, you have to specify which it's uh, how many rolls you're keeping. So for example, if I'm doing 4d6, 
and I want to keep the lowest two rolls, keep L2, keep lowest two. And that will keep the two lowest rolls. And then for dropping rolls, we use P, and that's because drop, the way to remember that is P is the last word of that to drop. I didn't want to use D because D is already being used for dice. R is already be, being used for the roll, and O is too similar to zero, so it can get confused. So those are your dice rolls. Something else I didn't mention is the turn tracker. I mentioned it, but I didn't show you how the turn tracker works. So if you click on one of your um, tokens for that PC aligned, click on T, it should now appear in the turn tracker. And there we go. It's been added twice. So let's remove, let's remove this one because it's in twice. And then you, if you have any monsters um, involved, you can add those as well. So let's have a look. Have I got any monsters on the map? I've got a monster here. Add to turn. And there, we've got the monster. Players can normally roll their initiative. And all you're doing here is just, just adding the initiative in here. So let's say Bruno rolled 10. Aladdin rolled 15. Rolled eight, nine, and you notice as soon as you put the number in, it is automatically sorting the order from highest to lowest. Let's get rid of that one because that one was just a blank token. Let's add it properly. There we go. That's probably because I've not got the name set. I've got the name set, so if I set the name here, it should appear now. There we go. There we go, and it appears there. So that's the turn order, and then you can just click through. That will keep the turn order. If you're doing multiple monsters and monster dies, you can just delete it and continue the turn order. So that's the turn order. Let's have a look at. Um, putting a map in and showing you how you can put the map in and alter the layers. So I've got my map down, my folder down here, but I've got no pages yet. So let's create a new page. And this one is going to be the map of Thunder Tree. So we'll call it Thunder Tree. And I'm going to show you a couple of ways of doing this now. So the first way is um, if it's already has a map on it. Now I've got the graphic already uploaded on the map and I know how many squares wide and how many squares long it is. So I know that each square is 10 foot on the map. The width is 28 squares and the height is 19 squares. So if I do that now We should. And sometimes we get this. Go back into it. It sometimes it freezes. So let's go back into it again. So twenty eight by nineteen, there we are. So let's have a look at our map. So if we go into the gallery on the side here, my maps and thunder trees on the bottom. So the first thing I want to do is make sure I'm on the map layer and drag that onto the map. Now if you notice on the layers here there is a dotted line. Anything below the dotted line then the grid will appear above it. If it's above the line then the grid will be neath it. So everything is recognized as a token. So let's drag this out and fill the map up. And you can see now that we've got two grids. The grid that's on the map and the grid that uh, we put on the configuration. If I move the map layer above the grid, you'll see the grid disappears because the grid's below it. If I move it back down again, the grid is below it. 
Now the problem we've got with grids is if you used something with a grid already on it, it can be very hard to line it up because quite often the images you download are not square, uh, two squares. So if you try and drag it and if you hold the control key down while you're dragging, you can try and line the squares up. But what you'll find is that if you get it close on one side, then it won't be close on the other side. So I often find that you're better off having no grid at all and just moving the figures around on the map because it's already got a grid on. But, the, but obviously the tokens won't snip, uh, snap to the map. So let's have a look now at Thunder Tree and let's just do something simple to show you how we would do a couple of buildings and how we would put some tokens on it. So the first thing we're going to do is put some tokens on and if we look at the beginning of the map here there's a couple of twig blights and let's see if I've got any twig blights already on. I haven't. So first thing we're going to do is drag some twig blights, tree blights or twig blights across. So we click upload, go to our explorer, find a twig blight and upload it. There we go. And we've got two twig blights. So if we put it on the GM layer, you can see the GM layer is not visible to the players and it doesn't block line of sight and players can't interfere with it. So we're going to go on the GM layer and drag our twig blights in. And you can see from here that the, that the figure is actually a, um, transparent, it's like a slight transparency because it's not visible to the players. If I want to do another one, instead of dragging along, on, I can just copy and click Control V. And there we have a second one. I also know that in the house down here, then we've got another six twig lights around here, so we can add those while we're here. So one, two, three, four, five, six. And I can just move those around. I know because they're transparent, the players can't see them. Because I haven't got stepping on, then I'll just put them in the squares. When it comes to the point that the players, you, see, you can see now my map's moving. That's because I haven't locked my map. So let's come down to the map and let's lock the map so it won't move again. There we go. Take off and the map won't be selectable now. There we go. So if I want to show these to the players, all I need to do, let's move the token layer to the top so it's on top of everything. All I need to do is move to tokens and now the players will see it. Once it's dead, I can remove it by sending it back to the GM layer. So we've added some tree blights there, some tree blights there. Up here, I know that we've got some ash zombies. So let's find some ash zombies tokens and let's upload those and how many ash zombies have we got in there we've got four so again down to the gm layer drag our four our ash zombie in here and we're going to copy and there we've got our four ash zombies so now we've got our zombies on there, we've got our map on there, so it's time to add some uh, light blocking uh, drawings on there. So if we go to the lighting layer, the lighting layer is the one that is going to help us with the blocking. And we want to zoom in. We click on the drawing tool. And for this, I'm going to use a red so that you can see it. And I'm going to be transparent on the inside. So I could draw a square on it, but this has got doors on it. And if I do that, then players aren't going to be get through the doors. So that's probably not the best way to do it. So let's do it using a polygon. So if we left click, And left click all the way down to the door there 
and right click to finish it and over this side we'll do the same left click left click left click and right click to finish it and here we do left click and left click now i've done the um, lines very thick here in reality you want to reduce this to probably a two or a one and if you see over here now i didn't right click so that's why that's done So let's get out of this and get rid of that. So in reality, if you're going to do it, you're probably going to use a thinner line. And let's draw a polygon again and use something in this size. You're probably going to use that size for your drawing so that when the characters view it, they can actually see the wall. But I'm just doing it in thick now so that you can see it. So let's do this one and that. Now for doors, what we could do is create a new layer. We'll create two new layers. We're going to call the first one closed door. And the next one we're going to call open door. So closed doors, we want to be seen by players and we want it to block line of, to block line of sight. Open doors, we don't want it to be um, block, line of, block line of sight and we don't want players to see it. We also want them both locked to players so that players can't interact with them. So for the closed door, we'll come up here now. And again, I'm going to do it in red, but in reality, you'd probably want to do it in black. Well, let's do it in black, actually. So it'll be a nice contrast. And we'll do a thick line. Again, transparent. We'll do a polygon. And now we want to overlap the door, the walls, so that we, that can be seen. So left click. And same here. So now we've got our two doors. So let's bring a player token on to see how this works in operation. So let's bring a player token on. And you must remember to click off the drawing tool, otherwise it keeps on drawing. So we're going to move this token. There we go. I'm going to click on this token, move it to the token layer. We're going to give it produce light and what we'll do is let's bring the light down so we can see so as you can see now as we move the player around they can see around this building but they can't see into the building then when it comes to the time that there's a closed door as you place come up to it and open the door you as the gm you can click on the door and all you have to do then is move that door to the open door layer and now the players can see in the room it's a nice simple way of doing it now one thing that can happen is that the players can actually move into the room uh, even though they can't see it and foil you so a way around this is we create another layer. There are two layers. The first one we're going to call Fog of War. And the second one we're going to call Clear Fog of War. I can spell correctly. 
So on the Fog of War layer, we are going to put, draw a box and we're going to put a box over that so that the players can't see inside it. So we're going to go to the draw tool, we'll get a box and let's draw black grey outline and a grey interior and all we're going to do is draw that box on the Fog of War over over that and now we'll move the token to the top layer so now again you got to remember to click off the token tool let's get rid of that box so if the player goes in there now he can't see inside it so that stops accidents all you do is if the player then decides to go in inside click on the fog of war box and we're going to move that to the clear fog of war and make sure clear fog of war is not visible so now when the player moves inside if i can send the box to move to clear fog of war now as you see inside they can see inside so you've got to make sure that layer is switched off to players and everybody so now the players move inside they can see it if you wanted to block it again all we need to do then is on the clear fog of war is try is select it and send it back so that is a one way to get rid of your fog of war and your layers uh, and you can put as many layers as you want on here I find that having tokens on the top is best. Um, so there we go with that one. So nice easy way to set some maps up. Um, as you can see that I do forget to click on these sometimes. So um, yeah, it can be. You wonder why you click on something and it's not clicking on. It's because you haven't clicked on the arrow here to move the arrow back. If you want to delete any of these, it's just a matter of highlighting them and, cl and clicking the delete button. Same with the doors, you can delete those. But, but you've got to remember that if you need to click these things, then you've got to be on the right layer. So there we go. All set back again. So if you want players to draw on the map, then what I would suggest is that you create another layer and call it drawings. We call that one drawings. It doesn't block line of sight. Players can see it and players can delete it. So as a player, if they wanted to highlight something, you could, they could come over here and say, oh, we want to go up to that area there. And that would be the only layers that they've got actually access to um, because you've locked everything else off to them and they could delete they could delete them as well if they so wished so that is um, one way to do the if you want a drawing so there's some ideas for layers you could have uh, tokens at the top then have drawings, then you could have your fog of war and your clear fog of war. If you want doors, closed door, open doors, uh, your lighting, if you're going to draw on there, a gym led to put your monsters. You can even have another one for objects if you wanted to put traps on. You can have as many on there as you want. Organize them as you see fit. Just try and remember which ones that, uh, you, that you've set. Um, and I think that's about it really. Um, there's nothing else I want to talk about at this moment. So it's, things are still moving along for standard action. You can see now and again there are a couple of bugs, a couple of errors. Uh, as I said with the, the macros that doesn't always work. Sometimes you have to come out and then come back in again. It tends to be when there's maps without any um, drawings on them. So, but if you've got 
once you've got your macros on there, they do tend to appear. So thanks for watching this. Uh, if you've got uh, any comments, then uh, please feel free to leave them in the comments below um, or jump over to the Discord for the standard action. Um, speak to Eric if you've got any questions and I'm sure he'll help. So thanks very much for watching and I'll see you all again on the flip side. Thank you.